Hello guys, I have a special episode for you today. Stan visited one of the largest crypto conferences this year, Crypto Invest Summit. And not just visited, but talked to the world's brightest crypto minds. Wait, 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 just hold your horses for a minute. First, a little news for you to stay in shape. And so the BTC still cannot get fixed above the $6,500 mark. But there are also positive news. According to CBOE Options Institute Senior Instructor Kevin David, the BTC price became less volatile than shares of Amazon, Netflix, and Nvidia. And this means that more players can enter the market soon, including institutional investors. And if to believe Brian Kelly, the latter will come to the crypto industry in the first quarter of 2019 already. Together with them, the price of cryptocurrencies, including BTC, may repeat last year's to the moon story. And at the end of this year, December 12th, the first BTC futures with physical delivery should finally appear on the crypto market. They can be traded on the Backit platform, which belongs to the financial conglomerate Intercontinental Exchange. But hey, that's just the tip of the iceberg. The real breakthrough is happening right at your hand. Yeah, in smartphones. <laughs> right here, buddy. The first blockchain phone Exodus by HTC is finally available for pre-ordering. It costs the same with the flagships of the other companies, about $1,000. But you can buy it only for Bitcoins or Ethereum. I don't know about you, but I'm throwing my smartphone away. Well, okay, okay, I see you want to go right to the most exciting news. Well then, come on. How is it going, my Jedis? I hope you guys are full of energy because you're going to need it. As Luis promised you, we are here in the City of Angels for the Crypto Invest Summit. How excited are you? Let's get it. Guys, the scale of this event is kind of awesome and I don't want to waste any more of your time, so let's just jump into it. Let's get some insights. Do you know what a major problem of blockchain is? No, I'm not talking about technical stuff. The new technology should provide everyone with equal rights and opportunities, but this is ideally how it should be. But in practice, things are different. Hey Stan, tell us what's the matter. Have you guys noticed how many women there are in the crypto industry? Yeah, not a lot. So how about we go address why there's such an inequality like that and let's go talk to Alison Berger about it. I think everyone is aware about the tech industry and the representation of women in it. What do you think, I mean, can you comment on that and the inequality and why you think the numbers are so different, so crazy, you know, there's such a gap? Well, I think that there's some disparity uh, between like men and women in certain subject matters, right? So, for example, if you go to a wellness event, there's so many women in the room and you try so hard just to get more male attendees there. And then in the crypto space, in the tech space, in the fintech space, there's, you know, it's the exact opposite. It's so hard to get women in the room. And while I'd like to say that it might have something to do with the subject matter, I don't necessarily know that we can actually like put all the responsibility directly on that. Um, I think that there's a lot of different um, elements at play here. Hey guys, do you love apples? <laughs> mm. You know, cryptocurrency have become so popular that even the creators of apples cannot resist them. For today's blockchain applications, I think that every the applications are often so different. You don't want to just go do another Bitcoin or another one that's been done. You want to have something special about yours. You want to have some, some little thing that other people haven't thought of or haven't constructed in this way. I'm involved in a couple of, of little blockchain startups right now, but they aren't true blockchain startups. They're more like ongoing businesses that will use tokens. We'll use tokens kind of like the same way you might consider shares of stock but for liquidity um, through you know markets in multiple places. But uh, it's really, you know, find people that are qualified that can actually do business. And that's, that's my level of security. I don't want to go out there and be total raw experimenter or judge which blockchain applications I hear about are going to make it. 
Cryptocurrencies are constantly confronting the traditional financial system, but it's not necessary to fight at all. Hey, look, it's not me saying this, it's Dan. There's a company called Black Moon. What they're trying to do is to build a bridge between the traditional financial industry and the crypto world. So that's a really difficult task. How about we go talk to Anna Cox about it and see how she's doing. So about a year ago, Black Moon held an ICO and you guys impressively raised nearly $30 million. I was gonna ask you, what is the secret to that kind of success and what kind of difficulties did you guys face doing that? Well, the secret to success is having the, the idea, the product and the ability to deliver. I'm gonna quote my CEO on this, who always said that investors buy into the team and the execution rather than the idea. There are a lot of ICOs that have a fantastic idea, but without the team to execute it, they're doomed for failure. So fortunately, we are blessed with a team that was able to execute and we were able to deliver most of the promises to our investors that we had during the ICO. Well, so did you like this? You ain't seen nothing yet. Hey look, subscribe to the channel, press the like button and share this video. After all, there's plenty of interesting stuff ahead of us.